Here we go. The monthly cost in hundreds of dollars to produce X scooters is given here. By the way, what are the fixed costs in this endeavor? You want to produce the scooters? What are your fixed costs? It's going to cost you a thousand bucks fixed costs. And how do I interpret that 20? What would be the units on that 20 for this problem? Oh wait, I'm wrong. That's not a thousand dollars. As I read more carefully, that's a thousand what? Hundreds of dollars. So I guess it's a hundred thousand dollars of fixed costs. Hundred thousand dollars of fixed costs. You guys see what I'm saying? Because we're working in hundreds of dollars for this problem. And what else do they tell me? They tell me this slope is twenty. So again, how would I interpret that? Well, we need to think about that. Okay, so let me help you. C of X in this problem is given by 20X plus 1,000. Okay, so this is section 1.5. Pull it down where you can see it. Uh, number 50. C of X is 20X plus 1,000. As soon as you do a problem where the function means something, I think it's very important that we write down what X means and what C of X means. So, so let's see. X is the number of what? Scooters. C of X is my cost in hundreds of dollars. Now, I understand that in this problem, M, my slope, means something. M is, let's see, 20 over 1. Right? That's, that's how we would write it. Rise over run. What are the units? 20 what? Well, what's the Y? That's in hundreds of dollars, right? And then these are scooters. So let me interpret it. interpretation. And in a business setting, hey guys, remember how this y-intercept, the thousand there, that hundred thousand dollars was my fixed costs? Well, we have something else in the business setting we call variable costs. And so the variable costs are, what would it be? Twenty hundred dollars. So what? Two thousand dollars per what? Per one scooter. The variable costs are two thousand dollars per scooter. That's what this is saying. Okay? So, what are we supposed to do in this problem 50? They had a whole bunch of stuff. So the first thing they wanted you to do was to find and interpret C of zero. Actually, find and interpret all kinds of stuff. That's the directions. Find and interpret. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's start off with the first one, C of zero. Well, C of zero would be what? Okay. How do we interpret that? Those are fixed costs. And what are the fixed costs we said? Yeah, because it's 1,100, so $100,000. You're going to pay $100,000 no matter what. Okay. Find and interpret little p of 5. Well, they have to tell you what little p is, all right? So let me show you that. It says little p of x 
is 140 minus 2x, and that's called the price demand function. Okay, so what would that mean? Well, it means that When, when we say P of 5, of course I can write that down, and it's not hard to compute, but that's 130. Well, what does it mean? Well, here's how you interpret this. Okay? So, what we mean by price demand, how many of you have heard of the law of supply and demand? What does it mean? Well, as I produce more and more and more scooters, what's going to happen to the price? Why does it go down? There's more supply, right? What if there's only a couple of scooters available and the demand is high, then the price is going to be high. You guys follow? So if we understand that idea, we can understand that this might happen. This function describes what the price is going to be for a given number of scooters. So what this says is, hey, when five scooters are produced, the price is, well, 130, except that then what do I have to do? Add on my two zeros because we're in hundreds of dollars. Okay, when five scooters are produced, the price is thirteen thousand dollars. That's what it says. So there's two functions I'm working with. I'm working with a cost function, and I'm working with a price function. Okay. Next. Find and simplify capital P of X. Oh, I guess I didn't do these in order. I should do this one C bar. All right, let's do that. So I skipped one. Okay. Again, let me remind you, C of X we have, right? C of X is 20x plus 1,000. C bar of x is how our author describes average cost. C bar of x you can get. Well, how do you do an average normally? That's something I've never had to explain to anyone. How do you average, what's your average grade, right? You take your number of quizzes, you add up your points, and then what do you do? Divide, right? By what? The number of quizzes, right? The, yeah, we know we understand that idea. Well, by an average cost, here's the thing. Say the cost of 10 scooters is whatever it is. I guess I could compute that, right? It'd be $120,000. How much would that be for each scooter, then, the cost? If the cost of 10 scooters, actually, let's do the cost of 5 scooters. That's even more instructive. Okay, what is C of 5? Well, it's 20 times 5 plus 1,000. So if C of 5 is, what is it? 1100, okay, C of 5 is 1100, P of 5 was 130, okay, so let's interpret C of 5, it costs how much, 110000, it costs $110,000, to produce what? Five scooters.
Yeah, you know what this tells me? What's this tell me? It says you better produce more than five scooters. Because if you only produce five scooters, actually it makes sense to me though, because are you going to be making up your fixed costs? No. How much were the fixed costs again, we said? $100,000, right? So no wonder the variable, no wonder the cost of producing five scooters is so much. So unless we can mass produce, or if there's a market for a lot of these scooters, don't go into this business. These are the kind of decisions that people have to make. But without algebra skills, forget it. You want to go into business? You better be able to understand the mathematics behind your business, or you can be in deep trouble. So let's look at this now. This C bar of X, I said, is the average cost. It's defined to be C of X divided by X, just like you do an average. What are we dividing by? What does X represent? The number of scooters, right? So I guess in my example, this is 20X plus 1,000 divided by X. Is that okay? Some people will simplify it. They'll go 20x over x plus 1,000 over x because you're allowed to add fractions that have the same denominator. And the reason they'll write that is because then they might want to write c bar of x is just 20 plus 1,000 over x because I can cancel. Okay? So now what? It says find and interpret what? Oh, C bar of 10? Okay, I'll do that. So let's see. C bar of 10. That would be 20 plus 1,000 over 10. So what's it going to be? 120. Okay. And now, again, I'd like to interpret this. Well, again, if 10 scooters are made, the average cost is what? Well, 120, and I got to add up my two zeros. Ah, $12,000. You see what I'm doing? The average cost is $12,000 per scooter. Okay. And that makes sense. If the total cost would be $120,000, then the average cost is $12,000. wonder how much we could sell them for. Did we figure out the price? No, we did the price of 5. What's the price of 10? Let's see. Do I have that? I have P of X up here. So P of 10 would be what? 140 minus 2 times 10. What would it be? Ah, look at that. So what's going on now? 120, but then you get... That stands for $12,000, right? Now are we in business? If we make 10 scooters? I don't know. We want to make a profit, right? But you understand the ideas going on, I think. It's the interpretation. Let me do this. The revenue here is given by X times my price function. And my price function is 140 minus 2X. So let's see, my revenue function here is 140x minus 2x squared. Hey, my revenue function is not linear. My revenue function is quadratic. That's actually what we start getting into tomorrow when you read 2, 2. But I can compute some different things. So let's compute the difference between 5 and 10. How about that? Let's see. R of 5 would be, 
Now, what would it be? 140 times 5 minus 2 times 5 squared. So let's see, if I'm right, that's 700 minus 50 there. And so I'm getting 650. So that's $65,000 in revenue. If I do R of 10, I get 140 times 10 minus 2 times 10 squared. You got to check my math on this, guys. I feel like something's wrong. Let's see. Remember, I took the X and I distributed to here and here when I simplified. So I did multiply by the X when I created the new function. And that's why it ended up being quadratic. Okay? Wow. So according to this, my revenue for 10 would be 1200 so that's $120,000. No. Sorry about that. Let's see. 65000 Hold on. i got to interpret these correctly. So five scooters gives me revenue of, um, yeah, $65,000. Ten scooters gives me a revenue of one, two, oh, 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 $120,000, okay? So that's what I just computed. So now I want to talk again about average rate of change. And this is what they're talking about in Section 2.1. They're using this revenue example to talk about it. But I think without this background, you'd be like, huh? What's going on? So he says, in his example, Okay, what was R of 5? 6,500? 650, so it turns into 65,000, right? And R of 10 was 1,200, right? And R of 0, I never computed, but what would be the revenue of 0 scooters? That's 0, okay? And so now what I want to do is I want to talk about the average rate of change. Okay, so if I were to plot these points on a graph, it would look something like this. Here's revenue, and here's X, the number of scooters. So revenue, we're talking zero, zero. If I make five scooters, then we're talking how much money? This was five comma what? Well, 650 was $65,000, but that's what it looks like on the graph. If I make zero scooters, brings in no money. If I make 10 scooters, how much do I make? Yeah, this $120,000. So the point there would be 10 comma 1,200, okay? Now, the revenue function that we had was a quadratic function and I don't have it in front of me. What was it again? Something minus 2x squared? Was it 140x minus 2x squared? Now, by the way, starting tomorrow when we get to quadratic equations, we'll pretend you don't know this yet, we're going to learn that the shape of this thing is what? Parabola, opening which way? Downward. We don't know that yet, okay? We don't. But this curve kind of represents what's going on. Is, it, is there a straight line that goes through these three points? No. Okay. But what happens is through any two of the points, you could draw a line. 
And that red there, those are called secant lines. That's what Barb asked about. Secant lines connect two points on the curve. And when we say average rate of change, the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line. So this should help you on those questions tonight. But I'm just happy because we also got through number 50 today. But let's finish up here. So. What's the average rate of change of the first one there? Well, I'll call this, how about I call it M1, and I call this M2 for those slopes. M1, how do you find a slope? Well, we know we go like Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 650 minus 0 over 5 minus 0. And 650 divided by 5 would be 130. Whereas M2, I'll do 1,200 minus 650. You guys look like you follow this. A slope, right? Over what? Yeah, I'll find out if you understand what I'm doing. Over what? 10 minus 5, right? It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's how I find slope. So this ends up being 550 over 5. This is 110. Okay? And that's in what units? Well, hold on. We're talking hundreds of dollars. So let me put on the extra zeros so I can just talk about dollars. Dollars per what? Scooter. Because isn't X the scooters? So now it's $13,000 per scooter or $11,000 per scooter. Now what is that? When we say that's an average rate of change, it's like this, guys. As I move from zero scooters to five scooters, the revenue I'm making is about $13,000 per scooter. But as I go from five scooters to 10 scooters, the average revenue is $11,000 per scooter. But why would that happen? Why would you be taking in less revenue when you're moving from, when you're increasing production more? Because what else is happening? Remember, the where this came from is P of X. And what's that stand for? The price, demand. And as X goes up, what happens to the price? It goes down. And so you're going to have less revenue. 